Another more interesting case that we had just a few years ago involved a university who, for various reasons, shall remain nameless. They had a problem with their joint venture partner. And the joint venture partner had been embezzling the company. And they decided, well, this is no good. We've got to end this joint venture. We're losing money because he's taking all the money. So they then tried to sever the joint venture, basically to um, demerge with the joint venture partner. The joint venture partner decided, well, this wasn't really in his best interest. So he went to the government and he claimed that this particular uh, foreign educational institution was um, actually paying him money or giving him money to go and bribe government officials and bribe other people and give kickbacks to various agents in the market, all of these things being illegal. And then he also claimed that the institution was a front for the Falun Gong because the university, as we know, Western universities, believe in this concept called freedom of speech. And maybe two students on campus had organized a seminar about the Falun Gong, but it was on the university website. The result of all of this activity by this particular person is that the website was blocked. The agents who were recruiting students for the institution seized <coughs> up and stopped recruiting the students. They weren't interested in doing that anymore because they didn't want to be associated with a university that may be a front for the Falun Gong. So we had a number of discussions with them. There were a number of approaches that were taken, one of which was to see the embassy of the country they were from, to go and see the government, to make sure that people in the Ministry of Education had an understanding that this university was not a front for any groups that were illegal in China, that the concept of freedom of speech had a little bit of a better understanding. But the real problem was how did you then communicate back to the, uh, the agency recruitment network that things were all good again and that we could continue. The website was unblocked, but the material was already out there. The joint venture partner who split with them ran a very big press conference, had got massive news coverage about what was happening or about what he claimed was happening, his allegations. So we decided, well, rather than try to take those allegations on directly in the press, which is probably a no-win situation for them, you just couldn't get enough press coverage to give credibility to what you're saying, to demonstrate the truth of what you're saying, which is that you weren't involved with Falun Gong and you weren't involved in bribing people to go. We decided instead to approach the Ministry of Education who had understood their perspective, to then let us run in their own newspaper. As you know, ministries in China run their own newspaper. So we went to the Ministry of Education to run some stories in their own newspaper about the institution so that we could then distribute that to the agency network who would then be able to see the stories and say, well, if the Ministry of Education is running stories that this institution is reasonable, then the institution must be reasonable. So then the types of stories we were running, we decided rather than have people from the institution itself, from the board or from the academic side of the institution talking about we've got a great institution, which of course you're going to say that, what about if we go and we find students who have come back to China and we get them to talk about the experience they had in the country and the experience they had at that particular institution and what that has meant for their careers on return to China. To China. We also said let's talk to some of the students who are currently studying at the institution and get them to talk about the experience they're having um, and we'll get that sort of message out as well. So these were the stories that we were able to get into the Ministry of Education's newspaper and if you know how the Chinese media works, once a story runs in one major influential newspaper, other newspapers then start picking it up. So we didn't have to go and do huge press conferences we were very strategic, targeted just the one newspaper. But from that there was a flow on effect. Other newspapers, wire services started to pick it up to run the story. As we collected good stories, positive stories about the institution, we were then faxing them through directly to the agency network. Because we couldn't rely on they buying the newspaper, reading the story. We wanted to make sure they really got it, they really saw it. Um, end result of that was that um, the agency network came back recruiting students again, sending students on to the particular organization. Um, so
So I guess if there's a, there's a message for you, whether your reputation is damaged because of something you've done wrong, if you're a BP, for example, and you've had a major oil leak in the Gulf of Mexico, you can survive it, you can repay that reputation. Or even if it's due to erroneous allegations against your organization, you can repair a reputation.